Hi, and welcome to another video of this uh, with Dr. Alode. And in this video, I will be talking about the fishbone diagram, or what we call it, the cause, the, uh, cause and effect diagram. Um, and some people, they call it the uh, Ishikawa diagram. So there are three names for this diagram that will uh, all result to the same tool. And this tool in particular will be very helpful for the team because it will uh, guide them to the root cause of any problem. As you see this uh, fishbone diagram or the cause and effect diagram, it looks like a, a fish uh, skeleton where you see the head, which we will uh, list down the causes, the, the effect, and the causes will be on the left side. Uh, let's, before we go ahead and start with this diagram, let's take a look into some of the basics on what is the cause and effect diagram, what is the Ishikawa diagram, or what is the fishbone diagram. So let's go ahead and start with this slide here. This slide says that this is a tool that will help you to identify, sort, display possible causes of a, a specific problem or quality characteristic. So again, the whole idea, this will make it easy for problem solving. You will be able to identify, sort, and display. It is a graphical tool that, will, that illustrates the relationship between the given outcome and all the factors that influence the outcome. So this is really uh, a unique tool because it will show you the relationship between the cause and effect the outcome and the factors that will in, that will add and will affect, influence the uh, outcome. A chart of uh, this type will help identify causes for non-conforming or defective products or services. It can be used in conjunction with the flow charts, Pareto charts to identify the causes of the problem. So in the previous videos, we talked about other tools for problem solving. And some of these are the uh, the, uh, the flow chart or the process chart. Uh, and the other one is the Pareto chart. And we did also talk about the check sheet. And we did talk about uh, other tools such as the brainstorming. If you haven't watched that video, you probably want to go and take a look into these tools. Uh, so this tool, this chart will add to the list of tools that you could use it for problem solving. It is a useful it is useful in a brainstorming session because it organizes the ideas that are presented. So uh, in a brainstorming, as you know, you collect ideas. And remember, in, uh, from the video of the brainstorming, you're not allowed to judge or critique or evaluate an idea. All you need is ideas. So you sit with your team and you collect the ideas. And now we need to organize these ideas. And we talked about the uh, affinity diagram, which will basically you organize under categories. Also this tool, the fishbone diagram, also could be used as a way to organize the ideas from a brainstorming session. It separates a large problem into manageable parts. So this is the nice thing. Instead of just you know, focusing on, on um, a big problem, you take the big problem and you divide it into sub problems and these will be helpful in managing the problem because if the problem if the pro uh, problem is too big you cannot focus you cannot solve it so what you need to do is break it down into uh, uh, smaller pro uh, problems where you could manage it and you could solve it so this is the nice thing about this uh, diagram the fishbone diagram will help you to uh, divide the big problem into sub problems and that will give you an, uh, uh, the time to focus on these sub problems by solving all these sub problems individually that will result into the main cause which is the main problem. It serves as a visual display to aid understanding of problems and their causes. The problems or effect is clearly identified on the right hand side. So now when I uh, will show you the chart, uh, it will look like a fish uh, bone diagram. And in this, uh, or a fish bone skeleton on the right side, where there is the head of the fish, this is where we put the problem. These are, this is gonna be the, uh, the, 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 on the, the, the problem on the head and the potential causes of the problem will be on the left side. The, the causes, the potential causes will be on the left side. 
All right, before we go ahead and take an example, we will uh, uh, take more information about why this is important, why teams should use the fishbone diagram or the cause and effect diagram, because it helps determine the root cause of problem or quality characteristic using a structured approach. Nice. So this is basically instead of just guessing or brainstorming without a structure, without a step-by-step, -step, without a systematic procedure, that could be not effective. But the nice thing about this tool, it's a solving a problem, reaching to the root cause of a problem using a structured approach. So it's important to be organized in solving these issues. Encourages group participation and utilization group knowledge of the process. So that would be also very helpful because you need your team to, uh, to be part of the discussion. So you need to, to, to make it easy for them as well. So again, if you are uh, all over the place and you're confused and your team gonna be confused as well, but this tool will keep you organized and this will drive more people to be involved in the discussion. So this will be an uh, effective tool to participate uh, to, to participate with a group. Groups mem group members will participate as well. Uses an orderly, easy to read format to diagram cause and effect relationship. So another thing, because this is a diagram, a, a graph, it would be very easy to read instead of reading a description, a long description. So you're summarizing all the problem, the cause and effect, all on one chart. So people can read it, especially managers, uh, upper managers, they don't have time to read description. So all you need to do when, when, when you presenting to them is showing them a chart that has all the information they need to know. So it is very helpful to uh, to know, understand the, the, the problem, the situation, the causes and, and effect through this chart. It's easy to read uh, diagram. Indicates possible causes of variation in the process. Again, that, this is once you brainstorming about these categories that we'll be talking about it, you will be able to identify some variation in the process and that will help you to improve the process that you have increases knowledge of the process by helping everyone to learn more about the factors at work and how they are related. Amazing, this is an amazing tool that will help everyone understand not only the problem, but also the factors that will impact this problem. Any factor, any cause that will lead to, the, to this effect, anything related to this will be, uh, these people will be able to better understand at a deeper level of understanding when they use this tool. This tool, the Ishikawa diagram, identifies areas where data should be collected for further study. Oh, that's another big one. Part of, part of the problem solving team is not to only solve the problem, but also you need to have a, a future vision. So this tool will give you some data, baseline data that will help you to look to the future when, if you have a uh, future studies, what you could do, you could say, okay, yeah, this, this tool helped me to find out these the factors Say maybe we could focus on that factor. So anyway, so it is a tool that will help you to identify areas where you should focus more in the future and to collect data. All right, now the basic layout for the fishbone diagram, as, you, as I mentioned, this is, a, this is a, a fish skeleton. You'll see the right side here is the problem, and this is the effect, basically, and that would be the head, the head of the fish. You write the problem, write it clearly, and now on the left side, you will see these are the causes. And in order to better understand these causes, some people, they say, remember the six M's, the six M's. And the, M, the first M stands for method, second M for materials, Sec, third M is for measurements, fourth for machine, fifth for manpower, and the last M for mother nature or environment. So how that's gonna go, these are the categories that you need to brainstorming the reason for this problem as related to the method. Okay, you say, okay, I do have high, uh, defective rate, okay, for XYZ product. 
and you look into the method, the first L. Say, okay, how the method, what are the sub-causes that will result into this problem? Okay, well, for the method, this machine should not be used, for example. The, um, the table saw needs to be adjusted. So this kind of the method that we need to think about it. What method that we used? Or um, should we go to step, uh, should we cut the wood first or sand first? Maybe this is one of the method, you know, that would be some of the reason of the issues, depends on the issue. But look into the way of doing thing and find the variation, find the possible causes that will reflect into and result into the problem. The second M would be the material, brainstorming with your team into the causes that will be caused from the material. Could be the material, the, the incoming material did not has, has been not inspected. This could be an issue. The incoming material, the material that we have, the raw material, it's not the right dimensions. That would result into a problem. Measurement, brainstorming on causes that would result into high defective rate. That could be the uh, measurement not using the caliber, the, the calibrator that we use is not digital and the, the operator who's using this calibrator is, uh, uh, is the, 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 the person who's using this caliber is, is not familiar with the measurement. So what we need to do, we need to provide a, a, a better measurement way uh, and that would help into solving the problem. Machine, maybe we could say, okay, well, this, need, this machine, particular machine has not been served and you write it down and this will keep brainstorming ideas and things that will result into this problem. Manpower, maybe these employees in the, uh, in the night shift did, does not have enough training on using this, these machines, maybe you need more training. Mother nature could be the, 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 the environment, the whole environment in the facility, maybe that resulted in, in, the, in this problem. Maybe the, there's not enough oxygen in the facility due to a reason or another, or maybe it's too cold. Uh, and the, the, the operator has to wear a jacket and by wearing a jacket that will limit his ability or her ability of doing the job. So now could be, these are the things that we should think about it. And these are the uh, issues that we will result into uh, solving the problem. So now what we're going to do in order to better understand this concept, we will be taking an example to show you how we can apply the cause and effect diagram. So I'll see you in another video in order to show you exactly how you could apply the effect and cause diagram.